previously. We got CD! Yes! Look at the pack! Look at the pack! On Progression Series Season 2. I literally have no doubt in my mind that we will be winning this episode. Oh, oh, how did God. I lose? I'm unbanning True Day that I still lost this episode. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Holy shit, you guys, we won Invasion of Chaos. This is big because we now get to spin the winner's wheel and we have a chance to double down on the power level that Invasion of Chaos offers. This is going to be fucking insane. So I can't help myself. I need to spin the wheel. I need to see what we're going to get. Please, please, big wild card, big wild card, big bucks, big bucks, big bucks, big bucks. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. <gasps> Five hours later. <laughs> oh my god, what do I pick? What do I pick? What do I pick? What do I pick? I get to pick from everything! Oh my god, I have to fucking think about this now. So I get to pick any card. This is too much power for one human to hold. Like, it took me probably 10 minutes just to get it down to 10 cards because there are so many possibilities. And this is just at this point. Imagine if one of us spins this wild card in like episode 50. This is gonna take a year to sort out, but I have it down to 10 cards. We have BLS, Change of Heart, Giant Trunade, Heavy Storm, Reborn, Pain choice Raigeki, Snatch Steel, Call the Haunted, and Mirror Force. Now, all of these cards are powerful for their own respective reasons, but we need to be tactical about this. I think I want to single out the cards that Gage specifically also has a copy of, because I think if I take a card Gage has, he's less likely to ban it because we are close to him possibly getting a banning because if I win this episode, he can ban anything. And so if it's something we both have, he's a lot less likely to do so. So God, as much as I would love BLS, I think he's going to have to go out here. That also means Heavy Storm is out. Uh, Snatch Steel, mm, as much as I want to have, uh, you know, war flashbacks to Season 1, and then Call the Haunted Mirror Force. Honestly, these two are probably less powerful than the rest of these, so I can probably get rid of these altogether. But these five are cards that Gage already has access to. And so, this is tough. I mean... I think Painful Choice is probably better later, and I think there may be more opportunities to get this in some of the side sets, so I think I'm gonna put Painful Choice off to the side. One thing my deck is lacking severely is access to good spell and trap removal. I have a lot of powerful removal that sort of, it's not Regeki, but I have Torrential, and there's a lot of removal now in the format, so Regeki isn't as punishing as it can be, although it's still insane. I'm actually leaning towards Trunade here, because having access, especially going into Ancient Sanctuary where we have Wall of Revealing Light as well as Level Limit Area B, I feel like Gage might want to play this just uninteractive stall strategy that can really hinder us because of our lack of spell and trap removal. While I really think it's tough giving up the rest of these, I think our deck's well-rounded enough that we can compensate for not having them, but Trunade is something that I think we're going to probably play indefinitely. So I think for the first Starlight Rare wildcard, Trunade is going to be the pick. So I'm going to add that to my collection, 
We got some ancient sanctuary to crack. Let's go ahead and let Gage tell you all about it. What an intense match we had for the release of Invasion of Chaos last week, ladies and gentlemen. It was a crazy episode. If you missed it, go back and watch it. You really don't want to be left behind. But today we're opening Ancient Sanctuary, released June 1st, 2004, and you will see a step back from Invasion of Chaos. We've reached this huge climax point in Yu-Gi-Oh! where Invasion of Chaos set a new standard for monsters, spells, and traps that needed to be released in the game to keep up. Ancient Sanctuary did not keep up. There's some pretty cool cards in AST, but it definitely doesn't stack up to how great Invasion of Chaos was the set before. Your secret rares are End of Anubis as well as Mazera Deville, both not really that great. End of Anubis, I think, is a little bit better. Stopping activated effects in the graveyard, I think, here. You have the agents released in here. Venus wouldn't get much better until much later. These all wouldn't get much better until much later once they got Master Hyperion in their own structure deck. Jiu-Jitsu Master is actually a pretty cool level 3 monster. 1800 offense is nothing to mess around with. If he battles a monster at the end of damage step, you get to place it on top of the deck, sort of like a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. We don't see that until Flaming Eternity, but we get a similar effect in Jiu-Jitsu Master right now. Zaborg is the first monster released, and oh boy, he is one that stands the test of time. Being a level 5, which is different from the rest, being level 6 doesn't matter too much in early Yu-Gi-Oh. If he's tribute summoned, target a monster on the field destroyed. That is mandatory, so you can't just sack him if he's the only monster on the field. He's gonna have to pop himself. Spells, you got some good ones like Enemy Controller and Monster Gate. Freshly limited with this list. Weird choice again, too. I see this coming back to 3. And then Traps. Wall of Revealing Light was something that threw me off my game last season. I'm hopefully not gonna let it do that this season here. But I think at this episode here, just at its fresh release, we have it at 3. This card's kinda silly. It's still at 1 today. And along the lines of other stuff, dude, there's not much. The only other big thing in the set here is Night Assailant, I'd like to think. Night Assailant is a flip effect where we target a monster our opponent controls and destroy it, sort of like old Vindictive Magician, but it also has effect when it's sent from hand to graveyard, you can target a flip monster in the graveyard, except himself, return to hand. That last line of text there, except himself, has just freshly been added to the card, actually. Night Assailant, back in the day, and up until literally about a month ago, was able to add itself from graveyard to hand. So there's a reason this card has been limited in the TCG forever, freshly at two in the OCG, as if you have two Night Assailants, one in the graveyard and one in hand. If you discard one, you have an infinite loop of hand advantage. Similar to Sinister Serpent back in the day, but it adds the advantage immediately. It's a dark monster, it's got a pretty cool flip effect, and it also adds any flip effect monster from graveyard to hand. So if you're done with the Night Assailant loop, you can you know, add back a Magical Merchant or something like that. Definitely an outstanding card from Ancient Sanctuary, one of the best commons. Hoping to get at least two of them so maybe we can visit the loop early while we have it. I think that's all I gotta go over for Ancient Sanctuary today, dude. Definitely a step down from Invasion of Chaos, but 24 packs? 24 more packs to open some cards to see if we can build something to beat Alex. Let's do it. Oh yeah, first things first, gotta get the pity pack. Tournament pack four, I've lost all hope in getting good cards out of these, and that didn't disappoint. We'll add it. Hey, Senju's pretty sick, but look at that chain destruction. Whoa, not what I need to care about, dude. Ancient Sanctuary, 24 packs of it. Let's see what we get. All right, you guys, this has already been an exciting episode, and we haven't even gotten to the opening yet, but it's Ancient Sanctuary, so I'm not too hopeful. 24 packs, let's go ahead and flip it up, see what we are going to get in pack number one. Don't think there's anything worth discussing here. See, this is what I'm afraid of. Level limit area B is a common, as well as wall of revealing light. And wall is at three for this episode. It does eventually get hit on one of the limited lists, so it will go down. But between this and gravity bind and all these floodgates that Gage has, he could very easily try to play like a wave motion cannon stall strategy. And that makes me nervous. So having Trunade now in the bank ensures I have at least one card that can blow away all of his back row, and I can just try to get in, maybe win in one fell swoop. So we'll see. Night Assailant's a sick pickup. This this is a common, but as we've seen, I believe in the Ancient Sanctuary episode of Sealed Showdown, this is not guaranteed, and having access to even more removal, we'll take it. And there it is, the Wall of Revealing Light. This card, you know, when you have a ton of back row removal is not very good, but when you're like me and are very limited, this card can just actually just end the game immediately. So I need to prepare for this for sure. Venus is nice, but probably not gonna be too useful until the future. Second Wall of Revealing Light, and there's our first hollow of the set, Death's Counter Blow. This card is not particularly good when a monster inflicts battle damage by attacking directly, you destroy that monster. So, ah, uh, interesting form of removal, but we have a much better selection of options. Soul Absorbing Bone Tower, oh my goodness, and the Wall of Revealing Light. Don't think we're going to be pulling off any FTKs with this bad boy here, but I will take it. Okay, Super Rare, Dez Counter Blow, I, I think this is something with like a battle trick. Oh, there we go, that's probably the best Super Rare of the set, honestly. Zaborg the Thunder Monarch. Got him last season, I think Alex did too, but I'm happy to see him back in our card pool. Definitely going to be wiggling this guy into our deck today. Just an outstanding light monster. 
monster. Again, in a time of Yu-Gi-Oh where all light monsters are really, really bad, Zaborg is definitely, uh, it's above the rest. Cool. <laughs> all right, gotta keep going. Yo, there's a secret rare end of Anubis. And as far as secret rares go, this one's not too bad. 2,500 on a one tribute. While it's face up, all effects of spell trap and monster cards that target a card in the graveyard or activate in the graveyard are negated. This can possibly actually blank stuff like premature burial and monster reborn. And it's one of the strongest one tributes we have access to, even eclipsing something like Jinzo. I don't think we're going to play this, but it's a nice card to have in the bank for sure. Couple interesting cards in this pack. Special Hurricane is bad removal, but it is like a board wipe of sorts. And then Sanctuary in the Sky is a super rare. I don't think we're going to be playing anything that requires this, but uh, it's neat still. A second copy of End of Anubis. I mean, it's not bad. I don't know if we're ever going to play this. If anything, this is a decent side deck card for if we ever see Gage playing some sort of graveyard reliant deck. This could be pretty handy. Oh, another ultra. Man, some of these cards just, they, they are really not good, dude. Ghost Knight of Jackal literally doesn't do anything, I don't think, but uh, it is a cool looking ultra rare. I think this really like encapsulates the art of Yu-Gi-Oh, man. The Egyptian cards like this. I think you show somebody a Yu-Gi-Oh card like this and they, they know what's going on. That is actually our second Knight of Salem right there. And I think that's our third Jiu-Jitsu Master. I'm happy I got a whole bunch of these. Happy I just did get the second Knight of Salem though. So now we have access to the loop of two Knight of Salem if we want to try that. I think I might be trying that this episode though. I might give it a shot. Gear Golem, the Moving Fortress. Whoa! That's about all I got to say about that. Come, wow. Two of the worst secret of the set, dude. I don't I, I got to be straight up honest with you guys. I didn't even read this. I, I read it. You got to play Warrior Zera. I really ain't got to read it. That's all right, man. We'll take the two secret rares. Sure. All right, coming up on the last two. Really don't care what I get at this point. I got what I wanted, which was the double Knight of Salem and the Jiu-Jitsu Masters. Everything else is just a bonus at this point. Special Hurricane. Oh my goodness. Yep, nothing too crazy in Ancient Sanctuary. Not going to bother wasting a reroll. We'll take what we got here. Let's get the building. Here's another reason I'm concerned about this episode. Solar Flare Dragon debuts in Ancient Sanctuary, and this card is just going to be a problem if he goes the burn strat. Legendary Jiu-Jitsu Master is a nice pickup, though. Definitely happy to see that one. All right, you guys, only a few packs left of Ancient Sanctuary. Nothing too crazy here. Let's open the third to last pack. I don't think there's anything great there. Going into our second to last pack here. Uh, Draining Shields, not good enough for our format, I don't believe. And for our last pack, didn't look like there's anything too crazy there either. So overall, I mean, it's Ancient Sanctuary. I wasn't expecting much, but uh, we've got some deck building to do. Let's get into it. For the last few episodes of Progression Series, we've been bouncing around different deck ideas to try to throw Alex off his game, but I think we finally hit a point where our deck list is um, damn near perfect. I decided to tweak a few things from last week's episode, but I still want to go with the general strategy of chaos, especially with our Yada Lock still intact. No bans on the horizon from Alex. I really want to give this another stab and see if we can pull off some crazy stuns. I really don't know what cost us the match last time. There was a few little misplays, like leaving Vampire Lord and attacking losing to Jinzo and then some other small things with like a, a one Hail Mary Sakuratsu armor that ended the game too. I, I feel like this deck is in a really good spot and I want to give it another stab before completely reworking things and trying a different strategy. I really feel like some of these cards just can't be answered like CED into Yada with, with the Sangin or the Witch if we have it. Knight of Salem is now a loop with this here if we have it with the last card in hand with CED or something like that. Get another flip effect monster back from the bin. This keeps us alive. Alex on the ropes. I decided to plug in three My Body as a shield and change up the trap lineup a bit, cutting down to one Sakuretsu armor. Um, the three My Body is just a choice because I see Alex playing a lot of destruction, things such as like Raigeki and Bottomless and stuff to be able to deal with these big monsters. Well, if I have the backup with My Body as a shield, as you saw in the last match, um, I did end up going through all three of them in one game and actively activating them too. I feel like this card is just really good in our format right now, and um, just main decking them I think is going to be a good call. Not much has changed with AST, and I don't think much will change for a bit. Uh, Zaborg was the big inclusion today, and hopefully we get some other big ones in the future, but this list, I think, is pretty tight. Lots of band symbols in there, so you know it's good. Let's see what Alex is cooking up with. So usually this is the part where I decide to play a deck that ultimately loses to what Gage plays, and then proceed to play something in the next episode that is as janky as what you're looking at and proceed to win. So I'm gonna skip the middleman this time and just play the jank now because I do not see a universe where Gage does not play some sort of burn deck just because of the fact that level limit and wall of revealing light are in here. And he knows that I have very limited access to spell and trap removal. He's not afraid to play these strategies because he's done it before. So I'm going to see if we can try to actually one up him for once and not one up the one up by playing 
whatever the fuck you want to call this. I don't even know, but this is what I think is going to give me the best shot at beating his deck. Most of my deck plays under gravity bind and level limit, and I have like 12 to 15 cards that can destroy a wall of revealing light and also like wave motion cannon. So if he goes that route, I don't know how we're going to lose, but I guess we'll have to see what happens, right? Let's go ahead and do the card by card. So first up three cliff. This has been like an all-star in this deck for me, uh, not just this deck, but just throughout the progression series. So happy we have him. Exile force is still good removal and we can search it with Roto. So I want the flexibility. I'm back on the dragon package. So I only have gray wing spear dragon and one dragon dwelling in the cave because hey, guess what? There still haven't been any other good dragons released in the last several packs. So I'm playing five dragons for three copies of stamping destruction. Gray wing is also interesting because we're actually playing a final attack orders Ojama trio package this time, similar to what Gage did previously because gray wing, the fact that it can attack twice means that if we get these Ojama tokens to attack, we could just deal 2,600 damage out of nowhere. So this is more deadly than it otherwise would be. It's also still strong enough though to hit over stuff like Swarm of Scarabs, Locust, uh, anything else that might be a threat, but it's going to get shifted to attack. So even if he's on like Stealth Bird, this can get over that when it gets forced to attack. Then I'm playing the Gyakugide Panda. Now, the thing is with the Panda is that Gage, if he's playing Wall of Revealing Light, is most likely just going to call increments of 2,000 points. If he does, Gyakugire is one of the only level three monsters that can actually go over 2,000 attack. If we put an Ojama Trio out on his field, this Panda will be 2,300 attack because it gains 1,500 attack, 500 per monster, which means it can hit over the wall and we're going to have a shot to actually take out some of his monsters or deal a significant amount of damage because we could even hit our own Ojama token, especially final attack orders is up. So I think specifically because Wall of Revealing Light is now in the format, I need to have this card in my deck. Then we have one of the all-stars actually out of Ancient Sanctuary that I wasn't expecting, Lady Ninja Ye. If you've never seen this, discard a wind monster, return all spell and traps on your opponent's side of the field to the owner's hand. So this is giant true nade one-sided on a monster at the cost of discarding a wind. I'm playing like 10 wind monsters in total. So if Gage has like wave motion cannon, a wall of revealing light, all that stuff, we're actually just able to bounce it all back to his hand and have free range to take out any of his monsters. Sangen, of course, searches almost the entire deck. Spear Dragon just nice because if Gage thinks he can kill defense position Spear Dragon, we can final attack orders him. It's going to go back to attack, so that'd be very funny. And uh, three Sonic Duck. Now, this card is still iffy, but with final attack orders and like Ojama Trio, we can hit under everything, deal like 1700. It's the largest level three in the game. That's also a wind. I was thinking about playing more copies of Dragon just so I have more targets for stamping destruction, but I want to be aggressive and have things that are large enough that can hit under these cards. So if he plays Bird, he's not going to play very many monsters. And if he does, they're going to be very defensive. That's it for the monsters though. For the spells, True Nade being in the deck feels so good. I feel so safe with this, but we'll see if it happens. Pot of Greed, Premature, Rhoda, a Spiritualism, Triple Stamping Destruction. And then for the traps, Triple Final Attack Order, Imperial Order, Double Michi Zuri. I like this because if Gage is playing any sort of removal, we can take out his monsters at the same time. This means if he plays anything like Swarm of Scarabs that we can take out something because if he's playing a burn style of deck, he's most likely not going to be doing much attacking. So this card's actually slightly better than something like Sakuretsu Armor in that regard. The Triple Ojama Trio, Double Raigeki Break, Ring of Destruction, and Torrential Tribute rounding out the main 40. For the side, I am siding into as much of my old deck as humanly possible from the prior episode just because it did so well. The problem is I can't side like 20 plus cards and I want to have a couple of other cards in here in case Gage is assigned to play a slower deck. So we have the Chaos Emperor, we have Warrior Lady, Jinzo, Merchant, two Tomatoes, a Shining Angel, a Skill Dark Magician, two copies of Swarm of Locusts. This is actually uh, just as an insurance policy just so we have more ways to deal with spells and traps if he is on that style of deck. This is also a dark though, so I wouldn't mind siding this in just so we have more darks for Chaos Emperor. A Fisher and a Smashing Ground if we need some more removal. If he's not on a deck like Burn, if he's on like a more traditional style of deck, that's what I'm going to side probably these 12 cards in for. Probably take out like the Dragon Package. I can afford to keep like final attack orders in. I think that's okay. And Triple Light of Intervention in case he decides to go back to Pac-Man or any sort of Burn deck where he's going to try to wall up. This card's going to ensure that none of those effects are going to go off. So guys, it's going to be a wacky episode. I feel like Gage should probably be on this deck, and I really hope that he is. Otherwise, we might be in trouble. And let's hope that we can just ensure that we're going to see the wheel one more time, and let's hope we can see Giant True Nade resolve, because Gage is going to shit when he sees it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. I'm not going to make this mistake again. I'm not going to do it. I almost just queued up the deck. Oh my god, could you imagine, bro? Second week, Pot of Greed, and on top of that, bro, Imperial Order. I'm losing my mind, dude. I need to play <laughs> these cards. Oh, man. All right, this is looking much better than it was before. I'm happy with this. Let's duel.
Well, Gage, rest assured, I'm back from being uh, underwater uh, <laughs> compared to last time. Happy just to in time back. for a good old ancient sanctuary, huh? What, what a fantastic set, wouldn't you agree? Oh, man, just following from, like the like I said, the wake of IOC, it's like all these other sets here are just like, eh, they're releases, you know? But uh, Invasion of Chaos, it, it, that's such a climactic point of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's hard to top it. I was going to say, like, I feel like you would... It's a tall order to really stand up to IOC, right? I can't even think of what set after after IOC would really even compare to changing the meta in the way that that set did. It's a, it's a tough call for sure. Maybe, and maybe Sanctuary... Phantom Darkness. That's my my look as Phantom Darkness is another kind of big one. Another one of the dark sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah weird, weird, right, weird. Right, it's, I don't know. And Ancient Sanctuary, it's not even like a good set. No. It's pretty bad, all things considered. Yep. But some interesting cards in here. I'm very curious to see what route you took for this episode. I don't think it's necessarily clear cut, but uh, I guess we'll have to see. So I'm ready to get into it if you are i'm ready dude let's do all right let's shout the patron it's gauge better win and nice and simple and I i'm going to don't worry it. i'm going to <laughs> all right fuck <laughs> when i get the choice too i feel good about it and you know what i feel real good allowing you alex to go first you letting go me first, go first oh god this is not good all right <laughs> good luck buddy let's good see luck my to. man well we're starting with pot of greed so all i can't right, complain about strong. that uh, I don't know how strong it is, if I'm being honest. I'm gonna set one monster and two back row, and let's throw it to you. Okay, cool. I will draw. Stand by What's phase. What's the extra phase. card, huh? Interesting. All right, I'm going to activate painful choice. <sighs> Yuck. All right. <laughs> Already a good Show way me to my start. options. All right. Let me give you some. Let me give you some good ones, bud. Here, I'll help you out. One is going to be a Knight Assailant, fresh okay. from the new set here. Pretty good looking guy. I'll dump a Sacred Crane. I will dump. I'll dump a bottomless trap hole. I'll dump a magical merchant. And last guy I'll dump is a Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. Nice little, you know, array of monsters there to pick from. Yeah, it's an awkward decision because no matter what I give you, you're going to have a light and a dark, which isn't great. Uh, so there's no way to keep you off of chaos, but that's fine, I guess. I think the weakest card here is probably Sacred Crane. So I think I'm going to give you that one. Okay, I'll take a crane. Everything else goes to grave. Um, all right, I'll throw down the crane. Big 16. Sure. Battle. Uh, it is Sangan. Okay. So let's go dig it. Yeah, you can go grab something. No yeah. problem to me. And uh, what do we get? I think I'll pick myself up an Exiled Force. Okay. I will go main phase two. I'll set one, two. Go ahead, your turn. Okay. Uh, I'll draw, I'll set, and I'll throw to you. All right, I'll draw. Stand my main. I'll throw down a second sacred crane. Excellent. Awesome. <laughs> I will overlay for... <laughs> For Did you know I didn't pull a single one of these? <laughs> no, I, I think you told me last episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. All right, I'm going to attack uh, with one of them. All right, well, one is not going to be enough because you hit the dragon dwelling in the cave. Wow, he's dwelling. Bro. You are not playing that stupid stamping destruction <laughs> again. Stop it. Um, take your 400. <laughs> I will take it. But you wish you could overlay now. I don't even think I care, honestly, about this <laughs> stupid dweller. Yeah, go ahead. You can dwell. All right, uh, we'll see how long he'll be dwelling. I'll... <laughs> Jeez, I'm just gonna set one and pass. Yep. Go ahead. I'll draw. Stand by main. I will set a card and I will just end my turn. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we saw one night assailant. Imagine there could be another one coming in my future here. Uh, I'll draw. I'm gonna run out this exiled force. Okay. Uh, let's take out the set. All right. It is sanging. I will trigger sanging. Okay. I did good. Got punished for that. Yep. You sure did. I'll add a night assailant from deck to hand. Now we get the night assailant. I think that's gonna do it for me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I will draw. Stay on my phase, main phase. I will normal summon exiled force. Hmm, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll torrential. Okay. I figured you might have that at some point. That is fine. We'll clear it up. Okay. Clean them up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to activate pre-mat. I'll pay eight and I'll target a sacred crane. Pretty good. I figured you had pre-mat because you dumped it immediately off the painful choice. Thank you if I have a response here. <laughs> I know you have a salient in hand. Pretty good. Mm, I don't really want you getting that draw. I think I'm going to write Geki break this. Ooh. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's a lot to waste on it. I'll definitely be okay with that. Yeah. Right, well, I mean, you get two cards, so I don't know. It seems pretty good. I'll draw. Uh, let's run out Cliff. Okay. Let's get slicing. Uh, when you enter the battle phase, I'll activate Red Geki break. See, you've got one of your own. Yep, I'll pitch Night Assailant and pop it. Sure. And then uh, I'll trigger fine. Night Assailant. Yep. 
can get the add a flip effect monster from graveyard to hand. I can add another copy of himself, Alex. That's the cool yeah. thing. Yeah. What do you mean, buddy? This card's been errated now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know if that's the best choice to get another copy of himself, though. I think it might be actually. I am gonna pick up a copy of himself. Okay. Cool. I'm good. All right, I'll draw. Stay in my main. Um, my eyes, Cliff destroyed a trap and took another card. He did do it, his job. He did really do his job. Uh, I yeah. will activate Swords of Revealing Light. Yep. Yep. And your move. I'll draw. Got a bit of a slow game on our hands here, I will say. Uh, I'm in a Rota. Okay. I will grab another Cliff. Okay. Uh, I'm in a set one. There are two. Okay. Uh, I will draw. Stay in my main. Oh, that's one on Swords, by the way. Yep. Gotta keep track. I will normal summon Mystic Tomato. Sure. Battle. Is my gray wing. I'll Michi Zuri the tomato. Not the tomato. Um, oh, he is going to be gone. That's all he right. He will. Okay. Go ahead. We'll draw. We will. We've got Assailant. Swords will go to two at the end of this. Uh, I will set one. I will set one. And Swords is on two. It is. All right. I will draw. Stay my main. I'll just pass. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'll draw. Uh, this will be the end of swords. Yeah, I'll just throw one down. They'll expire. All right. Give me a big one. Draw. Stand by main. All right. Well, I mean, I guess now is as good of a time as any. I'm going to activate change of heart on your face down. Yeah, sure. You can take him. What do we got here? What do we got? Cliff probably? Is it going to show me? I'm going to flip him. Hold on. Oh, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Strange <laughs> choice. All right. Um, so Gyaku Gary's on my side of the field now. All right, I'm going to uh, activate Space Typhoon. We'll go on the fresh set. Okay. It is Ojama Trio, so I'll chain it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So you can have some dudes. I'll take some dudes, no problem. Uh, I will banish a light and a dark. And I will summon the Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. There he is. Is he good? He's good. All right, I'm going to flip up the Gyaku Gyre Panda. Sure. I will go battle phase. Okay. Eight. I'll take the eight. It's fine. Three. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Cool. Main two. Yep. I will activate Chaos Emperor Dragon. I'll pay a thousand. Just send it at all, huh? Yep. I'm gonna get rid of all. All right. Uh, it was final attack orders. Okay. So these three what? leave. I'm gonna take nine for for the tokens, right? Uh, they don't, they're not destroyed, they're sent. Do they have to be destroyed? Is that what it says? I think they have to be destroyed. <laughs> my Unfortunately, outplay. yeah. All right, cool. Each time one is destroyed, yeah. So I guess you outplayed my tokens. All right, okay. so then we're going to be, I'm going to be taking 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 2100 from everything. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take my damage. We're in top deck war. No, because I have my Night Assailant trigger. <laughs> That's true. You we don't. Night Assailant. So I am going to get my Night Assailant, and I am going to pick up. We're going to go for Value Town here. I'm going to grab Magical Merchant. Have not normal summoned, so he's coming down. Go ahead. Okay. Going to need a good one. That's not a good one. Go ahead. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> that is a good one for me. Uh, I'll flip. Sure. Merch. Big merch. Smash. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I'll summon Kaiku. Hey, it's pretty good. Battle. Yep. 18. Take 18. Cool. Three banish. banish. Uh, I'll get rid of both of your cliffs, I guess. Okay. Actually, no, we'll do cliff sang, and that makes sense. Sure. And then uh, put you down to 100. Down to 100. Uh, not dead yet. <laughs> let's go. All right, man. Uh, good luck. We're going to need a hell of... <laughs> Perfect way to end this. Sonic Duck. No, Sonic let's go. The Duck. All right. Take I'll out take... the merchant. <laughs> yep. I'll take 15. Uh, I'll pass. Go ahead. All right. I'll draw. Stand by main uh, battle. I'll kill you. Exact game. I had order. Yay! Yeah, you got yeah, it. Good That's, game. The fact that it was exactly 100 was hilarious. Jeez, bro. <laughs> good game one. Good game one. I knew this was a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> when this is all over, I mean, there's still a game two, possibly a game three, but when this is all over, I'll explain my thought process. I think I uh, tried to one up myself too many times like I usually do. I think you've but... been trying to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I pointed yeah. out something like right before we got into this game and you're like, oh, you have no idea what I on. But bro, even if I have no idea what you're on, I can tell you it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> you got creamed that game one, dude. All right, buddy. Uh, go ahead. I'm gonna let you go first. All right, man. Good luck, dude. You're gonna need it. I'm gonna go to main phase one. I'm gonna set one, two, and three. Here, your move, man. Go ahead. All right, I will draw. Got a main phase one myself here. A uh, lot of hits. There's merchant. There's night assailant. Sangan tomato. A lot of things potentially could be. Um, what am I most concerned with? You know what? I think I'll just set a pair. I'll throw it to you. Let's see what you're cooking up. Okay, I'll draw. 
Standby phase and main phase. I will flip up merchant and I'll merch. What is merchant? Sure. Okay. Ooh, nice little MST. I'll take it. All right. I'm going to throw down Sukiyomi and I'm going to target my merchant. Oh, we're going to do some little flip flop in here. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. I'll play right into your Saku. No problem. Battle, I'll go for 11. The one Saku? Yeah, you know, the one the Saku. One. All right, cool. Nice. Main two, I will just set a card and then I'll go into my end phase. Put back the Sukiyomi, your move. All right, probably set the MST. I would imagine Suk back in hand. I'll go ahead and draw main one. All right, let's give this a shot. We're talking about Cliff. Cliff, yep, he's good. Try to hit the merchant. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll flip up the merchant and merchant will merch. See what we're hitting. Nope, book. I'll take it. Mm, books, not bad. Okay. Uh, second main, I'll just throw to you. Okay, I'll draw. All right, I will summon sacred crane uh yeah that's fine okay battle with sacred crane i'll poke you for 16 in your cliff now you've still got Suk, which is annoying i'm not thrilled about this i'm gonna write geki break oh my go ahead and pitch i'll pitch this locust oh my dude here on pac-man oh man dude you moved a little slow there i will chain my body as a shield got the my body yeah sure. i'll take right, 15 so you take the 15 i'll take four here yep and clip goes all right, cool. I will go to my main phase two. I'll set a card, pass it over to you. Uh, we'll draw. I will set a card and throw it to you. Oh no, Alex, bro, what's going on, man? Um, I'll draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. All right, I'm gonna activate giant true nade. I'm gonna put everything back in our hands. They're bouncing. All right, uh, is that a- Yeah, that's it... fine. Okay, cool. Nice. I know you have MST, so yep. like, even if I have anything, it's not like it matters. <laughs> I'll throw down Kaiku and I'll throw in some uh, some big damage there. 34, my monsters are gone. They are. Cool. I'll go main two. I'll uh, reset the fort here. Your move. Okay. And now the order's switched up too, so I don't necessarily know what is what. Uh, I'll go to main one. So I know you have a book and an MST back there somewhere, and I know you have a souk in hand. So I have a decent amount of knowledge. I will set, and I will reset the fort myself. Go ahead. All right, dude. Uh, I will draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. I am going to activate at the start of my main phase one, cold wave. There it is. A man has cold waves, so it tells me he probably wants to clean this game up in some capacity. Uh, he could also... I mean, I'm on pretty low life at this point. Yeah, I'll let it resolve. Phew. All right, man. Say goodnight. I'm going to tribute my sacred crane for the best tribute monster of the current era. Released in Ancient Sanctuary. Zaborg of Anubis. the Thunder Oh, Zaborg. Oh, God. And he's going to yeah. pop that face down and get it out of here. Oh, uh, it was my angel, yeah, too. I'm like, yep. yeah, I'm living. And then yep. I saw Zaborg. Battle yes, phase. That out. is yep. game, bro. Good get game. out of I here. I had IO, but like, there was no point to use it because yep. whatever MST was, you just popped it. Yeah, anyway, there was so. MST back here, the Book of Moon, and then the last card was a ring i was just holding yeah on so you had that anyway yep. yeah yeah uh, i had emperor but uh a i didn't have the lights and darks and b even if i did summon it you had rage kaiku board, i also so. had kaiku too can bad yeah, Ko kaiku. kaiku yeah so kaiku was another problem anyway what um, were you on okay so i i kind of get like because i was trying out this deck i just didn't play final attack orders so i mean you're kind of on like the panda burn type thing why it's a mix of panda burn and pac -Man. what i don't so, even know why i'm guessing just tell I, me what's up <laughs> I talked myself out of this again. I thought because in this set, there is level limit area B and wall of revealing light. You are 100% going to go on burn because knowing I have limited access to spell and trap removal, I figured you were going to use that to your advantage and just be like, all right, get through level limit, get through gravity bind, get through wall of revealing light. And I'm just going to burn you with wave motions and what other, whatever other burn cards that you like, because it seemed, I guess that's what I would do if I was in your position. And so I was thinking that's what you you're going to do so my whole game plan was to just play under that entirely most of my deck was level three for both level limit and gravity bind i had like 14 cards in my deck that are able to take out spells and traps even if they're not great they could at least do it in some capacity that's why you saw the dragon package come back that's why cliff was here i even i even went deep buddy i was on fucking lady ninja yay this episode wow. i was like i was just convinced that this is what you were going to do and uh, my sideboard was to side back into my old deck 
deck as best I could because I committed too many cards uh, to this deck to be able to like go back into it fully. Uh, so CED wasn't in the main deck, but I brought in like Shining Angel and the lights and like better dark monsters just to go back into somewhat of my older deck. But uh, it, I, I, I guess I just uh, overestimated what you might be doing and figured or underestimated the fact that you love CED so much. Yeah, I mean, to that, be that fair, the, the thing is, I and it's something I did consider is I was popping between different decks with every episode. I was doing a whole bunch of changing around to keep you on your toes. I think this right. is the first time in a few episodes that I decided to double back on a deck that I really liked. And I think I didn't give this deck a, a fair enough chance with last episode. I do still think, bro, I think I just got sacked, man. That Jinzo was pretty scummy. <laughs> and that Sakuretsu armor, now that I remember it's the one of, dude, it didn't feel great. So I tweaked it up a little bit. I changed some things. And the, the standout card of this episode too, bro, the one that I actually chose to max out on because I knew, I knew you were just going to have answers for it was uh, I ended up playing two of the My Body as a Shield. I was playing three originally, mm. but I bumped it down to two last minute. But My Body is very, very good, I think, right now. Yeah, I think so. We have so many cards that just deal with stuff because, like, we have Ring this time around, yep. right? We have just, like, now you have Zaborg. Like, Zaborg's another card for My Body if I was on it. I had to make sacrifices, and My Body was something I chose to relinquish. And so the, uh, the where the Panda comes in and, like, we're final attack orders is that if you were going to be playing some sort of burn deck, my logic was I need to have ways to be able to actually get damage and like actually get the clock on you. So Panda can actually hit over Wall of Revealing Light. Like I assume you'd only call like 2000 for it. If I give you an Ojama Trio, Panda gets to 2300. So it can mm. actually hit over a 2K attack Wall of Revealing while being level three. So it's under level limit and Gravity Bind. Uh, it also with final attack orders means that the tokens go to attack. Yep. So something like Cliff the Trap Remover can actually, uh, not Wall of Revealing Light, but just like L Lab Gravity Bind. This can hit a token and actually force like your cards to get popped. So if you have wave motion, anything like that. So I put like a lot of thought into it if you were on the burn deck, but you just weren't on it. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, this is going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, so, I just think this deck is superior in every way, man. Like I said, the sacred cranes, the dimension fusion that I got to resolve last game and everything, I just really had to give it another shot because I, I think this deck Fair. is unbelievable. Fair. Still waiting to pull I, uh, off the auto lock. Maybe someday. Maybe, maybe. And, uh, you know, I guess I just need to stop trying to one up every single time and just, you know, play, play to my strengths. But uh, that is is how it is uh buddy you want to know how my wheel went i it never surprised me how did it go it's a first ever for the progression series season ooh, two. Oh, exciting what'd you get i got the first ever starlight rare wild oh card. my god but wow okay all right so you get to pick any historical set that we've opened so that means no structure decks or anything but correct oh lord bro you get what any do you think card. i picked buddy i don't even know man the world's your oyster like do you go all the way back to like lob <laughs> and get reborn or something like that what do you i don't even have a guess man you want to tell me i literally i had to stop the recording because i told the i said to the editor of the camera i'm like i need like 10 minutes to figure this out because we've gone through like 10 sets at this point yeah, already there's yeah. so many cards uh so i had it narrowed down you'll see this in the episode i had it narrowed down to about 10 different cards and then what i ended up doing was i narrowed it down to five because i thought the most logical conclusion was to pick a card that you already have because that way you're not likely to ban it sure and so as a result of that the five cards that were on my radar were painful choice change of heart monster reborn raigeki and the card i actually ended up picking which was giant true nade. Oh, the true nade. So That's a good I pick. I also too. have a true nade. That's a I great pick. Yeah, there's arguments for all of them, but I also figured too, my weakest part of my pool is the fact that I don't have spell and trap removal. That's like generic. Mm -hmm. And so while yes, not getting Regeki or change of heart or painful choice or any of the others is a huge loss. I think just having generic access to this, I feel a bit safer moving forward. And I feel like it's safer that you're most likely not going to ban this card. Yep. If I picked heavy, storm that would 100 oh, be on the easy. chopping block yep. for you so, so get this alex for the last two episodes bro i wasn't even playing at my full strength there's been two cards that i would just neglected to put in my last two progression series decks because uh -huh. i forgot they existed man i did not play with pot of greed for the last two episodes <laughs> nor imperial order that i had what the yeah fuck? man so i was like wow i got sacked by these two cards I could have did them to you too. I just straight up didn't want to draw two in my deck. It was unbelievable. I guess not. You know, I guess you didn't want to lose the deck out war, right? <laughs> nah, I know, right, man? It tactical throwing, by the way, to make sure you don't get your, uh, to, to, to make sure you don't get the three win streak. Oh my goodness. I bro. wasn't trying to throw. I, I was convinced you were on the burn deck. I was like, there's no way he's not going to do it. I, I think this it. is killing. Yeah, this list is too strong, though. I think it'll be uh, good for the next few episodes here. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Next up is Soul of the Duelist. And what I think people are going to 
most look forward to is actually the episode after that. His next episode, buddy, after, is the first reprint set of the Progression Series Season 2. Dark Beginning 1, if there's a way to make our pools even stronger, that is going to be a disaster, and I cannot wait.